Hello, Akako. Mahalo for hanging out. I'm Chef Gooch and happy Kamehameha Day. If you didn't know about Kamehameha Day, it was that his grandson, Lot Kapuaiva, wanted to create a day in honor of his grandfather, Kamehameha Paea, number one. So it's a beautiful day for us to get out, hang out with Ohana, spend the time to just kind of chill as, as we like to do here in the 808. Wanted to share with you a little family recipe, you know, that, that, that we create over here. You know, it's called Tocino. And Tocino is a, it's a Filipino dish, usually a, a, a overnight or, you know, more than eight hours cured meat that's then pan fried to come nice and caramelized. Uh, traditionally, it's eaten with like uh, garlic fried rice and eggs in a breakfast dish called Tosilog. I found that it does really, really well, uh, pule hut, grilled as like a meat stick. From there, you can serve it with saimen, you can put on celery rice, you can make a buffet spread, whatever you like. So let's check it out here. First off, we have our, our garlic and our ginger, and I really want to show you a little 808 kitchen hack on how to clean ginger, okay? First off, what I like to do is I like to get like a container or something. It keeps my, it keeps my work area clean, and, and one thing that I always sort of shared with our cooks was that you treat your cutting board as if it's precious real estate. So you put stuff here to catch all of your, you know, to catch all your compost. Um, when you, if you use a, a peeler for your ginger, you, you lose a lot of flesh. So you can just simply take a spoon, scrape them like this. Okay, and I'll show you in a second, but when you clean your ginger, when you slice it, especially if you're gonna, um, you know, blend it up, puree it, turn it into a sauce or marinade, you always wanna cut it against the grain, okay? So, grain, just like if you cut meat, if this is a piece of meat, you'll see it with later on, we're gonna cut it against the grain. If the grain runs this way, we're gonna cut it perpendicular. So, I like to cut it in half, so I have a nice flat surface so it's safe, and then bing. Nice and thin, as thin as thin as you can against the grain. Right into my blender. Got my garlic. Show you, otherwise known as soy sauce. Over here, I've got my my uh, ketchup and my vinegar. And the American U.S. military contribution to Tosilog, I mean to Tosino, sorry. And the American contribution to Tosino, soda. There's another good brother, shout in Simeon, uh, Hilo boy, he's in Maui and his restaurant is called Tin Roof. Shout in taught me that for them, they grew up utilizing Sprite. Um, but we got ginger on house, so there you go. But you know, mama shop. Sugar, personally I like to use brown sugar. In this case, I didn't have brown sugar. Cook what get, white sugar it is. And lastly, salt pepper, and achote. Got them inside here. This is a great marinade that you can use with any meat. However, given the fact that here in Hawaii, we're really, really lucky. Our Ohana is really lucky to be friends with amazing hunters, amazing fisher people. So we have deer. Axis deer is an invasive species here in Hawaii. Deer, I mean, they breed like rabbits. It's, it's not even funny. So, one thing that we always talk about is what better way to get rid of an invasive species than to make it young. So here, we try to eat the invasives. This is a beautiful piece of Axis deer loin from Maui, from our brothers at Maui Nui Venison, Mahalo Gang. It's already cleaned up. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the silver skin off. Like, don't forget now, you can utilize Whatever's around you, you can use chicken, you can use beef. You could even marinate fish if you wanted to, okay? 
it is up to you. Cook what get. So I'm just gonna take off a little bit more of the silver skin. Not very much, we're gonna slice it thin, okay? So the loin, as you can tell, very lean, not a whole lot of intramuscular fat. So it's a really nice cut to cook hot and fast. In this case, you could do it a couple ways. You could marinate it like this uh, for like, you know, overnight or up to 24 hours, and grill it and then, you know, slice it across like this and then have it like almost like a steak. The fact that we're gonna get together later on as a ohana, I wanna make meat steaks, okay? So I'm gonna cut it. A lot of that. And then I'm gonna to start to cut slices off as thin as possible. And you'll see why in a moment. Remember gang, sharp knife is a safe knife. Okay. Just bang all the way. I'm cutting at what's called a bias. And the reason why I wanna cut it at a bias is that it'll, the longer piece will help me when I'm trying to thread the marinated meat onto a skewer, okay? Same way with whatever, tri-tip. If you're using chicken, definitely chicken, you you know, you could cut it into uh, the thighs especially. It's hard to cut nice strips like this. You could cut it into bite-sized pieces and skewer it. Or just grill it or pan fry it as is. Okay, bing, right inside. The second part of what I wanted to share today was making musubi. Because really gang, let's be real here. If you got a full day at the beach, you don't wanna be prepping at the beach. You don't wanna be spending your whole day, you know, getting food ready. You wanna, you wanna get to a place where you can cook, cruise and party all at the same time, yeah? So musubi was a way to you know, have something easily available to eat in your hand. Something that my mom did. I remember it. I have fond memories, you know, of like evenings where mom would just get something simple like terry chicken, musubi, pack it up into like a Tupperware container or a, <laughs> an old Cool Whip container and take it down to the beach. Dad would grill, we'd hang out. And there you have it. So that's it right there. Whatever, we talked for like, like three minutes and we're ready to go. From here, you can cover it, throw it in your refrigerator overnight, and you rock and roll. So in the interest of time, obviously this is not the same deer that I just did. I started this like yesterday. It's been going overnight, and I don't want to make meat sticks. I'm sure we've all had a thing where we've, uh, I'm sure we've all experienced when we've made a barbecue stick, and then when you throw it on the grill, the barbecue stick burns away, right? It's because you got to soak your sticks. I started these, um, I started these sticks in water this morning at about seven o'clock and it's, it's in, it's early after, it's late afternoon now. And six P's guys, proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. It's all about planning. I knew I was going to do this. I'm going to hook it up. I'm going to take care of this right now. Okay. So we've had this soaking all day. Take my meat, which now you'll, um, you'll notice that it actually feels firmer. You know, it's been, it's been soaking in a salt sugar, sugar solution, you know, for about 12 hours. And what I'm gonna do now, as you can see, is I'm kind of weaving it, kind of weaving it onto my stick. I'm not just going in and out, in and out. What it's gonna do is it's gonna create all these nice little nooks and crannies for the sauce to kind of stick, for the sauce to pull up, gather, and caramelize. And that's really what we want. That's where all that, that's where the good flavor is in a meat, st meat stick. You also might notice that I'm sure we've also experienced like a, you know, a junk meat stick where you take a bite and you just kind of, kind of get off and the whole thing pulls out. You don't want that. You want your ohana, your friends, your guests, whatever. You want them to experience the very best texture and taste. So take care of this part and then cut your meat in bite-sized pieces. So when they go to take a nibble, comes up nice and easy like that, right? So three pieces, you know, but yay long, there you go. Just do the rest. 
Can you see it? I'm kind of, it's almost like a, I don't know, I don't know what you call it. You know, it's, a, it's a round and around here. You know? Just like that. Don't forget, gang, you can use anything. Uh, if you wanted to do something like fish, you could cut it in, you know, long bite-sized pieces like this. Obviously, you can't really weave fish in. You could marinate it in the tocino a little bit longer, but probably just, you know, skewer it like a, uh, you know, skewer it like a, um, in one piece. But don't forget to make it bite-sized. Now that we have all of our steaks ready to roll, we've got our fire going, waiting for, waiting for it to get ripping hot. Put it off to the side and let's talk about musubi. You could use a musubi maker. That's quite fine, but today I'm gonna to show you the way that I was taught by my mother uh, because when I was growing up, we didn't have musubi makers. And I remembered mom, you know, she'd get up in the morning, she'd make like a big pot of rice uh, for whatever, for like soccer games, baseball games, going to the beach for a class party. I don't know how my mother did it where she managed to raise all of us, cook the way she cooked, but you know, like get up in the morning and bang out a hundred musubis without blinking. Thank you, mom. Without a maker. So first off, fresh hot rice. Hot rice, cold water. Very important. Hot rice and hot water equals sticky hands and an effed up musubi. So, hot rice, cold water, paokai, yeah. Not too crazy, but enough to season it. And what mom said was that she didn't want to salt the rice because it was, it was too much. If you think about it, the rice is an accompaniment to everything else in the meal. So if this is super, super salty, it doesn't complement everything else. So the salt water is just enough to season the outside, okay? Mom always used to wrap her, her musubi in nori. So I wrap my musubi in nori. You could use the, um, the, the boxes of that seasoned nori, but the reason why I like to use this is that it, it wraps a little bit better around the nori. And the whole point around the, about the nori around the musubi is so that it eats well. Okay? So I'm gonna take out a couple pieces like this. From here, I can run them over the fire, toast it up a little bit, bring it back. It's not a, it's not a perfect uh, square, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a rectangle. I'm gonna take it the long way, fold it in half. I'm gonna cut it, like that. And from here, cut it into fourths. And at this point, I would split it in half so I can cut nice, even pieces. Rice cold water. I'm gonna just dip my fingers no more across the, like no more than like the first uh, knuckle part. Wipe my hands together. I'm gonna pick up about a I don't know, you know a, a small snowball size amount. Every hand is different. Okay, for me it's like this. I don't want to make it too bambucha because when you're sitting down grinding, I want people to enjoy multiple musubis. I don't want them to pick up like one musubi that's like six ounces of rice. Okay, so from here, I wet my hands already. So from here, bang, I'm gonna, this part is the, is the back, my hand forms a shape, and it's one, two, three, four. I'm not pressing too hard, gang, okay? Because you want, part of the pleasure about eating a musubi is that perfect sort of density of rice stuck together. As you can tell, I'm pressing it, moving it, moving it, and I'm turning it as well. So after a couple tries, you have a triangular shaped musubi. You don't wanna make a round spherical musubi again, because that's all you, that's what you make for ohaka. That's what you do when you 
when you uh, take rice to the, to the graveyard, okay? I'm gonna clean up my hands a little bit. Another one. So once again, boom, a little bit quicker. I'm gonna make my first form, keeping my hands, making an apex, right? Bing. Two, three, four, five. Always turning so I'm getting both sides. Three-sided musubi. And then if you're self-competitive, you can see how many turns it takes to make a good looking musubi. And that's it. All this can be done in the time that your fire is getting hot. The rice is salted. It's gonna hold really, really well. You can do the musubis hours in advance. Unless you're crazy dedicated like my mother who did it, you know, right before we left for the beach. And that's it. And just knock it all out like that. Then all you gotta do is take a musubi, the rice in the middle, fold it up, and there you go. Perfect, it'll sit perfectly in like a Tupperware container or a Cool Whip container, and just boom, you hop by all that to the beach and it's a great evening. So let's finish up the, let's finish up the meat sticks. Our grill is ripping hot, meat's ready to go, a little bit of housekeeping. I take care of my grilling equipment the same way that I take care of my, you know, my kitchen equipment. It's what helps to provide, uh, put food on the table, is what takes care of all of us. So, always wanna make sure your grill's clean. Now, one thing that's missed a lot is oiling the grain. So there's two ways you can oil the grain. You could use, you know, like pan, like pan spray, just a quick little like, whoosh, and there you go. Not everyone's got pan spray. It's a very simple piece of paper towel on your tongs, a little bit of oil on top, and you can just rub it like this. Yeah? When you see it sort of smoke off, you know that's effective, you know that it's doing what it's supposed to do. This was like a round grill. I would put it so that the meat is, you know, over the charcoal, and then the rest of the sticks are kind of hanging off like that. In this case, all my charcoal is up here, and down here is open. Not crowding it. I'm still going to utilize a little bit of bakai. Out of love, salt is your friend. Okay. Hit it with some fresh cracked pepper. Instead of just holding it over and going like this, when you crank it, if you flick your wrist out, it, it oh, yeah, see, okay? It, it flicks the pepper out, yeah? Like that. And just psh, close the whole thing. You always want to reserve some marinade for your base. Basting is really important. It's going to lacquer your meat. It's going to give it that, that gorgeous sheen. It's going to add more flavor to it. It's going to caramelize. Caramelization is when heat and the sugars, they react. And then, you know, the basic components, the amino acids and all that stuff, it, it changes color. The, the, the chemical reaction is what gives it the yumminess. So I'm going to give it a first base. So, and I'm not brushing it because I don't want to brush off the pakai. The excess, the excess marinade is going to kind of drip off the sides. It's going to hit that hot charcoal. It's going to flash, impart more flavor. Rock and roll. Give it a turn. See all that 
flavor right there. It's good stuff. Paste it again. If you ever travel to Japan and you eat in like a yakitori restaurant or a robata, a grill, you know, like a grill restaurant, you'll see that their marinade, which they call a tare, is right on the side of the grill. And they'll actually pick the whole skewer up. They'll dunk it in the tare and put it back on. But the really cool thing about tare in Japan is that it's not like they build up a new marinade every time. The really good uh, robataya, the really good grill houses, their tare, because it's so high in the uh, salt is that it never goes bad on you so as they use it down it gets to a place and then they build the tare back up so you have tare that's like you know 25 30 years old and all it is is that it's this coalescing of years and years and years of good flavor and it's, it really is it's amazing because my fire is organic right it's not even it's not hot in every single space what i also like to do here is I can tell when I flipped it what parts of my grill are hottest. So I'm gonna kind of juggle it around like this. Yeah. Okay, take that like that. Turn that over there. Bring this off to the side a little bit cooler. Because yeah. what I want is I want that char. I want to impart as much flavor as possible into every skewer of the There's the coals. Oh yeah, of course they have all your sugar. It's a beautiful thing, just like smoky time. But anyway, gang, you could have been anywhere else today. You chose to spend some time with us. Mahalo, Olokai, for having us at Anywhere Aloha Fridays. Gang, you have a wonderful and safe Kamehameha Day wherever you are. Go easy, choshakas, and be nice. We hope. <laughs>